someone told me when I was a younger artist, if you don't see the art that you like, just invent it yourself. I grew up playing on the steps of the pyramids in El Salvador, and I knew I had a deep connection to the Maya and like the architecture and, and their art. Especially the sculptures. Those sculptures, there are these giant stelas carved out of a rock and how they told stories, but they're also objects to perform rituals in. But I'm really not interested in imitating what they were doing. I was interested in learning about ritual, but kind of reinventing, creating my own. The sculpture of Socrates, it was my first outdoor sculpture made out of recycled aluminum. The sculpture itself, they're a continuation of my disease thrower series. So they're headdresses, they're shrines, and they're healing instruments. The materials of the sculptures is an opportunity to go back to Central America, go back to Mexico and collect materials from these lands that I crossed as a child. My work is autobiographical and it's really kind of important to understand what, where I come from. I was born in El Salvador, in San Salvador. It was the revolution that was starting when I was born. My first few years, it was kind of a happy time. And then the war started to escalate. My family had to flee El Salvador immediately, and then I was kind of by myself. When I was eight years old, they told me I was going to be reunited with my family in the United States. But I'm going by land. Plant them anywhere randomly. So my journey started in El Salvador, and I went to Honduras, to Guatemala, and all the way through Mexico. And this kind of went on for almost two and a half months. Tripa Chica is a game that I grew up playing with other friends on a piece of paper. I used to play when I was crossing the border when I was eight years old. I used to play with the coyote, I used to play with other kids. So this has always been a really important game. And this is why I always mark my spaces with this game. I was very lucky because the border was very different in those times, it was 1984. But even those kids that I was with, some of them didn't make it. I still think about that. Uh, could have went so many different ways. I was born December 12th. My birthday is very significant for me because I was born on the 12th month, on the 12th day. And for the longest time, I was looking at the calendar and I was just like, wow, I'm going to have a birthday that's going to be all 12th on 2012. And that's when I found out I had cancer. Yeah. In the middle of radiation treatments, it was really kind of empowering time for me because that was the first time I was exposed to a sound bath. I was losing a lot of water because of the radiation, and they said it's really good to replenish the very little water that you have, so sound therapy may work. For the first time, I realized sound is medicine, and if I overcome this experience, I want to learn how to play to kind of share that with the others that are going through that struggle. I started my own healing workshops for undocumented immigrants. 
And when the pandemic hit, I came across Juan Carlos Ruiz, the pastor at the church in Bay Ridge. He was feeding over 3,000 people per week. So I decided to collaborate with him and they just bring all my healing work into the church. En algún momento tú te preguntaste por qué te pasaba esto a ti? Sí, yo pienso eso todo el tiempo. Um, yo creo que cáncer fue un tipo de difícil, pero ha sido mi gran profesor. Cada uno tiene su propia trauma, vea, y esa trauma es bien diferente para todos. A mí esa trauma de ser niño, de estar separado de mi familia, de la guerra civil, uh, todo eso se manifestó en, en una energía que montaba en mi estómago y se convirtió en un cáncer. Today is a very special day because in a couple hours, we're going to have over 300 people show up. I put an invitation out for anyone that has cancer or anyone that is a cancer survivor or anyone that has dealt with a cancer loss. At some point after overcoming cancer, I, I did see art a lot different. There was a point that I was like, Oh, do I continue being an artist or do I just go into a jungle with a curandero for 10 years and disappear and just learn? I was very conflicted which direction to go in. But I'm more interested in creating my own path. And my own path is using art and healing and combine the two. My experience is healing is not always a pleasant thing where everything is like perfect and clean. Healing can be very difficult and challenging. But having a community that has gone through similar experiences can be really empowering. making these elaborate disease drawers. It's not just about telling a story from my past, but it's also about how this healing ritual can continue even in the future. Long after I'm gone, 